Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? And welcome to our webinar Wednesday recap. Every week here at Dotto Tech on Wednesday, we host a different tutorial webinar where we teach you some aspect of productivity or online marketing or a social video, something fascinating, interesting, and useful. And then I take that webinar and I compress it down into its essential little bits. We try and make it about a 10 minute recap of the webinar with just the highlights so you can blast through it if you did not attend our webinar weekly webinar. So here is this week's webinar, which is all about the importance of email lists, choosing the right email service provider and integrating it into your business. The importance of building your mail list is our topic today. Now, should you choose to join us live for webinar Wednesday, if you find this information valuable and you want to join us live, check out the links below uh, where you can sign up for our free webinar Wednesday, which we run every single week. And you can also watch the entire replay if you sign up live for our webinar Wednesdays. That's it. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this week as we look into building your list, building your business on webinar Wednesday. So here's, so here's the plan for today. We are going to dive into the world of uh, email marketing. Looking forward to your questions and comments as we go through. Email list management and email list and building your email list is the most boring. It's, it's like the broccoli of online marketing, but it's so important to our lives. Here's the issue. Here's the biggest issue. We are increasingly growing our businesses in the online space and social media on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube. And in every single one of those cases, we are building our empires on rented ground and they can disenfranchise us from our community at the stroke of a key. And more than that, our community can become dis disenchanted with the channel and move away and we lose touch with them if they are our, if that's our only avenue of communication. Case in point, what's going on with Facebook? Is there any single person here of the 224 people listening live at this moment who love Facebook <laughs> and are the only space we have is a mail list. And I know it, it's boring. It's old school. Sometimes people are a little resistant to it because there's trust issues with how other online marketers have done things as, as, as we've gone ahead. But that's still the place that you have to build. And they, you know, they say the money is in the list, and it indeed is. Your community that you have on your mail list will sustain you and 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 uh, and will support you. So that's that's the big why. It's always interesting to me because I do a lot on the small business side of social media classes, and my social media classes are way more attended than my email marketing classes. And yeah. when we talk about lists, and I think that, you know. You're right on the you're right on the money saying it's rented space. People work so hard at their fan following on these social channels, and they're they're thinking about quantity a lot of times more than quality. And really, the quality of those fans is getting them on your list. And your whole premise of your social campaign should be about how can I get my um, my audience engaging with me, but better yet, how can I get them on my list? Because if Facebook got shut down and actually um, I got an email about a week ago from a small business owner and they had an employee that set up their page and they weren't an admin on their page, they lost access to their page when the employee left. So now that's a pain in the butt to get that back. That's time spent. And if they actually had worked on some of their email list building, they would be better, well, much better off. On, we should tell them exactly what an email list or an email tool will do for them. You know, I think one of the big things that people need to understand how an email service provider can help you is that tracking when somebody signs up on a website, that they help do some of the hard work for you as opposed to you trying to collect them paper format over the phone, although you still can collect them that way. But an email service provider also um, gives you analytic tracking, where if you were to send an email, and actually this happened the other day, somebody sent me an email through Gmail and they didn't blind copy everybody. So they sent out as many as they could through Gmail and they tried to format an email and it did not go well. And also I saw a whole bunch of emails. So there's a privacy thing, which email service providers kind of 
keep you keep you in compliant with all the things around it, as well as the list building part. Okay, so there's the compliance side of of, a, of an email service provider, but then there's also the technical aspects of gathering. So they have to have mechanisms and physical um, kind of attributes in place that allow us to collect email addresses, embed registration forms on websites or in documents so that people can opt in to our list so that we have access to them. And then the best ones also allow us to manage those addresses in such a way as we can segment them into different into different uh, into different categories. For example, if you had, you know, if you if you were collecting, if you just I just wanted to know about people that were interested in email software. I would put a tag on everybody who signed up for this particular webinar to identify that you're interested in this. And actually we did because you signed up for this webinar. So we categorize people by the webinars that they sign up for. So we know what topics you're interested in. So in the future, if we are doing something specific to those topics, we can more aggressively let you know about those topics because we know they're things that you were already interested in. So list segmentation is a huge mm -hmm. part and a, and a really underserviced part early on in people's email career, some uh, email collecting career. They always just look at collecting addresses, but they don't look at segmentation. So we'll be talking about that in a moment, but they also have to give you the functionality to be able to communicate with your people and create transactions of some sort, such as uh, creating some sort of a, a, a follow-up email sequence and funnel uh, to send newsletters out. Uh, to be able to enable them to download different tools if they need them and the, to, to create the functionality for that sort of stuff. And at the higher end, to be able to actually have e-commerce solutions built in where you can actually sell products and have them fulfill products. And some of the really advanced ones also integrate with your um, membership sites and manage that entire process. So they can they grow from just initially collecting names quickly through to collecting names that are segmented uh, by by category through to collecting names and being able to email back to the names uh, with newsletters and more elaborate sales funnels and perhaps even at the end selling a product to people. I've, my arms are as wide as they can go now, <laughs> but that is that's kind of the the hierarchy of what email service providers do. Now there was a time not that long ago when when we started this we always talked about the exact same tools we always started out with mailchimp as probably the tool that we advised the most the reason is mailchimp is a fairly reliable service provider but they provide they allow you to start for free when i ran it by april yesterday i said so we're just going to do the old aweber mailchimp routine you forget constant goes, contact no we need a new vaudeville routine yes. and what did you say to me um, I said ConvertKit, and I know that there's been some commentary about ConvertKit in the chat here. So I was holding out to answer you on that. Um, MailChimp, I still think, is a great option. Um, I like Constant Contact as a great option. But what I like about ConvertKit is um, I actually had the opportunity, I guess, two years ago to meet the founders. And um, and I hesitated because they are a newer, pl newer platform, because newer platforms always have great deliverability. And um, you know, and they're trying to sell all of these things, but I've used it with um, a few of my clients. And what I like is that price point, it's affordable. Um, I like that, although it probably for some may have a little bit of a learning curve, what it does do is a step above the other ones. It has more automation opportunities to it. You can create forms. It definitely uses the if then this rule. Um, so uh, for some of us, it could be a little bit of a learning um, learning curve, but I do really like it because of that functionality. Um, the templates are definitely basic, but at the end of the day, over 60, it's like 67% of visuals don't render in an email. So you really don't want your, you want images in your email, but you don't want it heavy image based. What, what you'll find is a push-pull relationship with any email service provider. You're going to submit your list of people that are on your email list, and they're going to say, prove to me that you have permission to market to these people, Steve, because they don't want me sending a bunch of emails out that get flagged as spam because then the email service provider gets it gets a bad reputation. Google starts saying, oh, these guys send spam, and everybody that uses that email service provider gets painted by the same brush using other tools and how other tools fit in the process. The most important other tool is your own web host. 
is your own website. Okay. Because so often that's where you're going to be driving people to. And you're going to be asking people to join your mail list from reading your blog post, watching your videos, uh, coming to a landing page which lives on your website. So website themes like website uh, the products that we use to build our website, uh, you can create what we call landing pages. They're like sales pages where people opt in. Now, you all have opted in many, many times for our webinars by going through our landing pages. And those are created right within our website. Now, now some webinar platforms will create those as well as, as well as landing page creation tools like lead pages or click funnels or the website tool itself. But at the end of the day, what has to happen is the email software has to be able to create uh, basically just little bits of code that you can little snippets that you can put in so you can create opt-in boxes and they will they will do them in a variety of different ways uh, but you need to be able to get those forms inserted in your email soft sorry in your web page software somehow so no two content creators there are no two publishers on the internet have the exact same system we all kind of macgyver together our own system of how it all works. But understanding the pieces of the puzzle is really important. My philosophy is you can't make the right decision on choosing any of these tools, that there's always gonna be one feature or something that another tool is gonna to do better. And so it's impossible to make the perfect decision. But once you go and you say, I'm gonna use this, you can make it the right decision by how you react after the purchase. By diving in with both feet, learning to use the tool effectively, learning every nuance and understanding intimately how it's going to work with your business, you turn it into the right decision by how you act after you purchase it. And they've all got the ability. I, I can tell you right now that our business would be in the exact same place if I had chosen Entreport instead of Infusionsoft back in the day. And if ConvertKit was available at that point and I'd chosen that tool, we would be in the exact same place because I understand and hired somebody like April to help how the tool works. So don't lose sleep over it. This I know this is, and I got to tell you, when I bought Infusionsoft, because it was quite expensive when I bought it, it was more than it is now. Yeah. And I couldn't afford it at that point in my business. I was like, Ur! there was a lot of anxiety in Steve getting that tool. And I didn't need to have that. I think if I'd had clarity of thought and understood that, that it was really my actions that would determine the success of the product with my business, that I could have reduced a lot of the stress. So I'm hoping that, you know, if we do one thing today, that we kind of lower the temperature as far as the, how much concern you have if you're going to make the right or the wrong decision. You can make it the right decision. And there you have a few of the highlights from this week's webinar Wednesday. I encourage you to look in the description below and join us live for the next webinar Wednesday. If you have not yet done so, please subscribe to this channel and make sure to ring the notification bell so that you hear when we upload any new videos here at Dotto Tech. Until next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.